Hello. Uh, so my name is uh, Romain Pouclet. Uh, I'm French, but I've been living in Canada for the past uh, six years. So I'm really happy to have a, a cool conference to go to in France. Um, a few years ago, I wrote a book about CI for iOS. Uh, and the goal was to uh, tell the reader how to build the app using the command line, uh, set up a Jenkins, run tests, all the way to uh, making the app available to uh, your testers. And uh, today I'm working with BuddyBuild, uh, a cloud-based uh, CI, CD, and user feedback solution uh, for mobile project. Uh, and we help every day uh, thousands of teams uh, shipping their apps. And what we did is uh, we took a, a sample, a random sample of a thousand apps, roughly, a thousand active uh, iOS apps, and we pulled some data that we wanted to, um, to share with you. And the goal is to share some of the lessons that we've learned and help you make uh, informed decisions for your next project. Um, but before we uh, dig in, uh, I just want to set some context. Uh, this is something you're all familiar with. This is the way software is built. Um, it's an interplay between your development team and your users. Uh, so you start by uh, creating the app. So you add the code, you make the design, and at some point you want to share it. Uh, maybe you just want to share it with your team, um, your VPs, uh, your QA team, uh, your boss. But uh, hopefully at some point you want to share it with uh, your end users. And we found that a key component uh, in building apps that people love is involving those end users into the development process. So you want them to uh, test the app and uh, provide you feedback. And really it's all kind of feedback. It can be uh, explicit feedback, like a screenshot and an email saying, okay, this color is it's, it's too confusing for me, I don't like it. Or more uh, implicit feedback, like uh, analytics or a crash report. And if you're doing things the right way, um, you want to address this feedback. So you're back, you're back into this, uh, a new iteration of this, uh, of this uh, cycle. And the goal is to go through these circles as quickly as possible. And you can do this only if you have tools to rely on. And the other finding of this iteration is a set of tools. Um, because during the life of your project, you will have to make uh, thousands of uh, tiny decisions. So it starts with an easy one like, where are you going to put the code? Uh, maybe GitHub, maybe Bitbucket. Um, are you going to use CocoaPods, Carthage? Uh, are you going to make the switch to Swift? Or maybe use a little bit of both? And with the data that we are going to share today, we, we want to help you make uh, informed decisions. And in the end, this is what it looks like. Uh, maybe you have your CI solution, uh, your CD so you can send apps uh, to your testers, uh, your feedback libraries, and your uh, crash report and analytics tools. And this is something we've had for years. And this is nothing new. But on mobile, uh, it's quite broken. Um, because you end up with um, an ecosystem of one of solutions that you have to plug together. And it can take a lot of time. Um, this is something I realized when I wrote my book. Uh, this is something that the co-founders of BuddyBuild realized when they made BuddyBuild. And this is something you can find on Google. Um, if you look for how to set up a CI solution for iOS project, it's a 19 pages long uh, tutorial uh, that explains how to do all this. And my book is like 200 pages, so maybe you just want to look for this one, but it's really up to you. And based on all that, uh, we made BuddyBuild so you can focus on making uh, application that your user will love because you don't have to bother configuring a CI. Uh, we will manage the code signing for you. Um, and we will provide you uh, everything you need so you can go through the cycle I've showed before uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, so uh, let's look at the data, starting with an easy one. Uh, we are a cloud-based solution, so it's not surprising that most of our customers are using a cloud-based uh, Git hosting solution. And it's mostly used by, uh, mostly used GitHub and Bitbucket. Um, which solution do you think is the most used for people that are actually uh, storing their own uh, Git repositories? Um, it's GitLab. Uh, and the rest is shared between 
uh, GitHub Enterprise and Bitbucket Server, or, sta or Stash. Uh, most people are targeting iOS 9. Uh, some people are still supporting iOS 7, so you can imagine how fun it must be. And some people have already decided to go all the way to iOS 11. We didn't see a lot of watchOS applications, and we saw even less tvOS uh, applications, which uh, I guess if you want to work on this platform, there is a big market opportunity, maybe. Um, most people stick to native technology. I'm sorry, Julien, if you are in the room. 15% uh, are using uh, React Native, Cordova, Ionic, stuff like that. But people are mostly sticking with native. Uh, it's mostly a mix of Objective-C and Swift. Uh, and it's quite impressive to see that the uptake that Swift had, because already 25% of the team are using only Swift, no Objective-C at all. A team are using Swift 3, uh, which is the latest, well, which was the latest stable until a couple of days ago. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, and it's not too surprising because uh, it's the latest stable version that comes with Xcode. And we can only assume that these numbers are going to grow uh, as people uh, embrace Xcode 9 and they will also migrate to Swift 4. Um, when you create your project, you have two configurations, release and debug, and for most people it's enough. But some people like to add uh, as many configurations as they have environments, so maybe one for App Store deployment, one for ad hoc, uh, and so on and so forth. And we have teams with 11 configurations. Uh, okay, at the risk of starting a flame war, how many people think that CocoaPod is the best dependency management system? Show of hands. It's okay, it's a safe zone, you can, you can tell. I was expecting a lot more, but uh, most people are using CocoaPod, 70%, and Cartage is only 7%. Uh, we have more people using, uh, not using any solution, so probably Git some modules or just sticking the code in the, in the repository, than we have people using Cartage. Uh, uh, how many people check in the pods folder in the repository? Okay. That's <laughs> uh, most people do, more than half. Uh, but if we look at bigger teams, we can see that this number is actually decreasing. Uh, teams with uh, more than five developers actually chose to ignore this pod. Uh, it gives you more control, but you can, it can cause like, more difficult merge conflict. So it's, it's really up to you. Um, CocoaPod makes it really easy to add dependencies, uh, and most teams have less than 30 pods. But we've seen pod files with 80 dependencies. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, 1.2 seems to be the most used version of CocoaPods. Uh, some people are still stuck in the pre-1.0 era, uh, probably afraid of merging. And this is something that, that's not good. Uh, unless you really don't like your coworkers and you just want to basically tell them to fuck off, <laughs> uh, you should always make sure to check in uh, the log file. Uh, if you don't, especially in a CI context, you will end up with uh, discrepancies between the app you build locally and the one you build on your CI solution. Uh, we've counted uh, a lot of unique pods, so you have a lot of different tools. And most of them are backed by uh, big companies like Google or Facebook, but some of them are actually community projects, uh, filling the gaps in Apple feature sets. Uh, okay, how many of you here are actually writing tests? and running them. Ah. <laughs> um, we found that more than half of the teams do not have any tests, uh, but it's not a really interesting number because when you create your project, you already have a testing target. So what's more interesting to see is how many people are actually running the test as part of their build process. And this number got done really, <laughs> really quickly. Um, <laughs> um, teams have m roughly under 100 tests, but we have some teams with huge test suite, which are close to the 3,000 tests, uh, so it must take a lot of time to, to run. And uh, we made body build in a way that for, uh, for a large majority of applications, it just works. Uh, but if you have a more complex workflow, you can achieve that with custom scripting that you can hook at different parts of the uh, build process. 
And 40% of the apps actually have custom scripts. And if we look at what they are doing, um, they are mostly running NPM commands, uh, using Fastlane to tweak the project. Uh, we give you full control of the VM, so you can do anything you want. Okay, one last question. How many of you actually enjoy managing the code signing manually? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> uh, well, BuddyBuild lets you connect your Apple developer account, so, you can, so we can manage the code signing for you. Uh, and 70% of the, the apps chose to connect uh, their profile. Uh, most of them are using company accounts, but we found some enterprise uh, and some people using individual accounts. Um, and this is just a sample of the, the apps that are using BuddyBuild. So we took, uh, you, we really took numbers from a different variety of apps, a big one and smaller ones. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. So thank you for this talk. Um, I'm actually using a uh, Buddy Bill myself because uh, even though it's, uh, it's not a free, I mean, you have a free version, but it's a freemium. Uh, but how have, have, you, have you ever played the game of trying to guess or to estimate uh, the number of hours or days uh, you spend uh, setting up the Jenkins uh, uh, CI solution and also how, uh, how much time you could spend uh, maintaining it? it that, that could be fun too. Yeah, uh, I don't have like actual numbers. Yeah. I don't have like actual numbers of the uh, number of hours you can save, but uh, my previous company was using uh, Jenkins and uh, I think it was a thousand uh, line long bash script and uh, every time Apple would like for Xcode 8 when they changed the code signing part basically it took like two or three days just to fix it yeah so and we have this feature called uh, Xcode preview yeah that's I receive emails sometimes saying oh your app is ready to upgrade to this uh, version a new yeah. version of Xcode that's nice yeah basically every time Apple release a new version of Xcode we'll take the latest uh, successful build of your app and we're building using this new version of Xcode. So and from the crowd, we have a question that could actually be transformed into a new features. Is actually when you detect some problems like uh, the missing uh, pod file, uh, the pod log file, maybe you could warn the, the team and say, hey, uh, here is a good way to, or like warning on, on some metrics, like uh, yeah. what you say, what? 80 pods in one single yeah, that's, project? Yeah. It's amazing. Well, we have something called Build Doctors um, that. For specific errors, we know how to fix it. Um, and I think potfile.log missing is one of those, but I'm not Interesting. Sure. Interesting. But this is the first thing we check. When, when we have someone that's reaching out to Intercom saying, my app is not building, this is one of the first things we check. And, and Xcode 7, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, and I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest, about your talk. Uh, because it didn't mention uh, how many users are using tabs versus spaces. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we don't know. <laughs> All right. So, okay. I just wanted to make it out safely. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and so, um, uh, another question from the crowd uh, that asks if you actually have uh, access to the app source code. Uh, I guess the answer. No, we don't. Uh, Basically, when the build starts, we, we set up a VM uh, that's on uh, Mac Stadium, if you, if you know them. And uh, it's entirely secure, and we don't have access to it. So, no. Yeah, pro probably a, la a last question is, um, what could be interesting also is it try to correlate, find if there's a correlation between the number of, of framework increasing and the number of times your, your build crashes. That, that would be fun to have a look at that. Yeah, we have the data. Since we, that's one of the f cool thing about the build, if I may, is since we, have, we, we address whole part of the problem, we, we can like, merge all these numbers together. So that could be something fun to do. Yeah, we'll see that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.